who are you raising? A personality or a biomass? Well, to tell you the truth, this is a very, this is going to be a very serious session right here. And, uh, and the ultimate of this teaching is, for this week, is how to raise up a child, how to become a hero to your child, how to become a hero to your child. How to raise up a child so, such that you, 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 you will become his hero. You will become a hero to your child. Now, let me just try to give you a conception. The conception, I will try to narrate and uh, tell you in short the conception of uh, upbringing, children upbringing or parenting that we have in most families and in most homes in our world today. Unfortunately, many people are not ready for parenting. Many people are not prepared for uh, children upbringing. Many people are not prepared for nurturing. And they don't even know what it means to nurture and bring up a child. So today, I want to let us know what is child bringing. And, and I've been talking about this most of the time. What is child bringing, I mean, child upbringing of a child? in the life or in the eyes of a lot of people. Upbringing of a child, a child's upbringing is only, you know, to the most parents think that their responsibility is simply to provide something to eat for the child, for the child to have what to wear, what to eat, and that is not worse than his, um, than his, uh, than his colleagues, than his mates. So most parents, when they're th thinking about raising up children, they are only thinking about providing enough food for the child to eat. They are only thinking about having enough to be able to send this child to school. They are only thinking about having enough money to be able to feed the chi child, for the baby to be able to be well-dressed. And, you know, so in some cases, for him not to look worse than me his mates so that your child is clean your child is fed your child is well dressed that is the ultimate uh, assignment of the parent to a lot of people many parents don't even have that or some parents have children and they just hope or they are hoping that something will happen and by mis by miracle that child will be raised up so a lot of children are uh, I mean, a lot of parents don't really know what it means to raise up a child. A lot of parents don't have an idea what it means to parent, to uh, raise up to uh, a child. But there must be, I've already spoken about this in the beginning of the week, there must be a purpose to raising up children. We must raise a child, we must raise up our children for, with an intention, with a purpose. And the ultimate purpose of raising up a child is to form in him a personality. The ultimate goal of raising a child is to discover the personality that God had created him to be, to help him discover that personality before he leaves home. But I will tell you that to a large extent, a lot of children never really get to discover the personality that God has called them or he has created them to be before they leave home. Most children, left, by the time they leave home, they have just become older by age. They have become 18 or 20 years old, but they have not really discovered who they are or what life is about. A lot of children mm, have been raised up just by the principle of how most people raise up their children. I mean, their children, most of the world raise up children like that. We raise up children the same way as we raise up home domestic animals i'm sorry so children for us is just a little bit above domestic animals as rude and as insulting as that might sound but in the real sense somebody has to call everything by his name what we've done is that we've the only the only difference between a lot of in a lot of families the only difference between raising up children and raising up domestic animals is that domestic animals don't sleep on the bed 
domestic animal get to sit, I mean, to sleep in the on the floor somewhere there, while children get to sleep on the bed. That's the only difference between raising up children and raising up animals in a lot of homes. We we have a bed for them, we have uh, the clothes for them, and they can talk while the animals cannot talk. In some cases, the animals are even better. Some people interact better with their animals than with their children. But that's why a lot of people say today that the dog is the best friend of a man. They see the dog as their best friend because they have better interaction with that dog than they have with their children. So they, they, their children is not their best friend. And, they are, and that's why I spoke this week about how to make your children your best friend. So to a lot of people and in a lot of cultures, there is no concept of child rearing at all. There is no concept of, there is no concept of uh, parenting. There is no concept of parenting. So the only concept of parenting that most people have is that you give them something to eat, you give them food to eat, make sure that you are there for them, you give enough food. There is food in the house, there is food in the fridge, and the parents prepare, prepare food for the children to eat. And then, if you really want to become a good parent, you make sure that you, they have good clothes to wear. So they are always well dressed so that other people will be able to look at your children and say, Wow, wow, beautiful, wow, ooh, wow, what is nice suit, wow, ooh, you are a real man, you look like a grown up, ooh, wow, ooh, oh, a lady, beautiful lady, wow, you are like a princess. And we are, we are getting some pride out of that. We are getting our ego ego popped off and we are happy and excited that they are praising our children. So in a lot of families, there is no concept about childbearing. There is no, not childbearing, child raising, child, uh, child rearing. There is no idea of what is parenting. A lot of people don't know what is parenting. We don't know anything about parenting. And what we do is that we're actually raising up biomasses instead of raising up personalities. We don't even, many families have never even heard of the idea what it means to raise up personalities. Many people don't even know that the reason they've been given children or the reason they have been trusted with children is to raise up personalities. Many people don't even have an idea that the ultimate goal of raising up children is for personalities. Many people even have never heard the name, I mean the word personality. And when we talk about personality, we are only think we are thinking that we could only talk about personality in terms of talking about you know Hollywood personalities or movie personalities or movie stars or things like that. But but really the ultimate goal of parenting is to be able to raise up a personality in accordance to the person that God had created that person to be. The sole purpose of parenting is for the parent to be able to help that child to become potentially the, 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 the exact image, the, the total picture of what God had in his mind when he gave back to that child. The, 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 the ultimate assignment of a parent, of parenting, is to help that child to grow up, him up in such a way, to parent him in such a way that the, the hidden person in him will be revealed that the hidden personality will be unveiled. So the goal of parenting is to unveil the person, the ultimate person, the best person that God has put in that person to be. The best dream of God for that person. The best intention of God for that child. The best aspiration of God for that baby. The picture that God has in his mind concerning that baby is supposed to be discovered and unveiled in that baby. So if the baby is supposed to be, is to be top into discovery, into discovery is personality, the person that God has put in that child. The person that God. So who are you raising? Are you raising a, a, a biomass or you are raising a personality? So what is a biomass? A biomass is a biological mass, you know, biological mass. This is a biological mass. Biological mass is biological reality. Biological mass is a mass weight. Mass is a weight. So a weight of flesh, biological weight, you know, flesh weight, weight of body, body weight. So most of the time, that is what we do. You know, when you, when you want to measure the cow, you measure the mass of the cow. When you want to measure the, the, the peak, you, you measure it in mass. 
biological mass because it has the body but it doesn't have essence so when most in most families unfortunately they would they, they you know they are only raising up biological mass somebody that is small you know, someone that is has some it doesn't matter what kind of figure or flesh he has but who is big what is the mass it must be a small mass or a middle mass or a big mass you know just the mass the weight of the flesh biological mass so how do we end up raising biological masses in our homes instead of personalities we end up raising up biological masses in our homes when we don't put values in those children when we only care about feeding the body each time you are only concerned about the body of your child each time you are only concerned about the physical well-being of your child each each time you are only concerned when your primary concern is only about so you only about what you see you're only seeing the child you're only seeing the physical body of the child if the physical body and the physical being of the child that you are looking at that is the only thing that exists in your mind you are raising a power masses if the only thing you are seeing in that child is just physical no mass that you are feeding that and if your only obligation or your 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 your, your primary obligation is just to give food to that child is just to give no clothing to that child is just to care for the physical things and needs and desire that you see you are only raising biological biological mass so to the extent we are so concerned about how our child will look about how nice they look how well they look how well they are fed how perfect they look that we are actually not concerned so much about who they are inside what they become inside their essence and their personality so it is so bad that if you happen to give birth to a child that has deformation in the body body deformation twisted body or paralyzed body or something if we took some kind of deformation or disability we think oh we are tragedy we are in tragedy oh, oh why did god do this for me oh the whole world is ended some people actually think that their world has ended when they give birth to a child that has some kind of deformity or not because to us a child is only the body so when you see the body that is twisted that is faulty that is having some challenges we think that we have a bad child we think that god has not been fair to us we think that god has not treated us well we, we begin to cry we think that we're actually having a tragedy because the body is not right but what about the person what about the person what about the personality inside it would the thing that we are supposed to be concerned about we are not concerned about it we are not concerned about the personality inside we are not concerned about who that person becomes inside so we are not even concerned if the inside of that child is twisted or not we are not even truly concerned if the personality of that person is is damaged or not we are not even concerned if the person if if there is this uh disablement in the personality of that person and most of the children that we raise up we end up raising up deformed children the, the disabled children most of our children are actually disabled they are not disabled in the physical they are perfect in the physical they look perfectly okay no 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 problem no deform deformity they are nice they have their style they speak good english or they speak good language they go to school they you know they dress the way you want them to dress they look good they are handsome they are beautiful but in the real sense, inside, they are deformed. We have actually the, the, uh, 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 the, the sub disabled children. They are disabled mentally. They are disabled emotionally. They are disabled physically. I mean, men, uh, f uh, spiritually. They are disabled in their personality. In fact, as a matter of fact, their personality is retarded. What do I mean by retarded? Because in the person that is inside of them, they are not formed yet. So somebody could be 30 years old or 20 years old or 18 years old or 20 years old, but this person is not discovered and this person is not formed yet. So you have somebody who looks nice, <laughs> so, and you know, dressing well, doing everything nice, but it's not deformed inside. So what she, which is better? Is it physical deformity that you are supposed to be concerned about or, inf or personality deformity or emotional deformity or or spiritual deformity or mental deformity or personality deformity 
most of the people that we call children, great children, go to school, dress well, look nice, they are deformed. Personality, their personality is deformed. So, unfortunately, those are the kind of children that we are raising up, and we are proud that they look nice, they look exactly how the whole, body, the whole world wants them to become. But those ones who are, who are maybe having autism or whatever, you know, whatever deform, deformation in the, in the physical, we pity them and we say, oh, but maybe inside, that person is actually more whole. That person is actually more healthy. That person is actually more a person than our children that we think are, are nice and are wonderful. So this also goes a long way to why I always, why I always say that a lot, a lot of people don't even have anything to do with with parenting or with marriage. And a lot of people shouldn't have anything to do with mar with marriage or parenting because parenting is a big job or marriage is a big responsibility. 50% of people you see in the world are not supposed to even have anything to do with marriage because because marriage is a big business. It's a, it's a big responsibility. Because for you to marry and to have children is to be able to understand what I'm saying now. But many of you have never even heard these things before. Talk less of being able to fix it. So what is the, your own understanding? Or um, what is the essence of your understanding of parenting and bringing about children? What, what is bringing about up children and raising up children in your own in mind up to today or till now? What has it been? Has it not just been about, has it not just been about providing clothes, providing dresses, providing food, and that's all, and sending them to school? So when you are now, as a parent, able to provide uh, your children with clothes, clothes, and you are able to provide them with uh, food, and you are able to send them to school, you think you are a superhero and a super champion. That's what a lot of people are thinking. That's what a lot of people are thinking. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Because these people might grow up to be 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old. They might not smoke. They might not drink. They might not even be doing anything bad. But they are still biomasses. So who is a biomass? That is what we should be talking about today. <laughs> who is a biomass? Biomass. Maybe, I think, am I... Am I Am I, am I giving you, uh, and let me, let me see, before I tell you what is a biomass, most, some of us parents who have done very well, or who really think we are good parents, most of the things we do is that we take our children to school, I mean to church, or we read the Bible with them, and pray with them, but that still does not make them to not be biomasses, that does still not make them to stop being biomasses, so, but we don't have a system. That's why this week I started talking about having a system of raising up children, having a system of parenting, having a goal in parenting, and having a system in parenting. So for a lot of us, we think that we are doing well when we say, oh, I told you not to smoke. I told you smoking is bad though. Don't smoke. Oh. Don't smoke. You see those people smoking, they are bad. You see those ones drinking, they are bad. Don't do it, oh. and don't have any sexual relationship with anybody. Oh. It's a sin, oh. you know, just telling them, oh, I told you not to go there. Why did you go there? Why did you go? Come, I'll beat you. Why did you go there? I told you not to go there. Why? Oh, you touched that thing. You, why did you touch the thing? But I told you not to touch the thing. Now. Come, we'll beat him. Oh, oh, come, 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 my son. Come, come, come. Come on, great uncle. Come on, great uncle. Come on, great uncle. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Banda, banda. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Then those ones will say, oh, good boy, good boy. They say, oh, yeah, now you are God, yeah. You're having some pride inside. You say, yes, 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 that's my child. Yeah, yeah. You're well brought up. He's saying good, good morning. He's saying good afternoon. He's saying bye now. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best some of us do. We don't smoke, oh. Don't drink, oh. Don't steal, oh. I told you not to steal that thing. Why did you steal it? Why did you steal it? Why did you steal it? Okay, I'll beat you. Why did you steal it? <laughs> That's the best we can do because we don't have a system even though those things are not bad but they are occasional emotional outburst they are just occasional outbursts or emotional outbursts that that is though it's not systemized that is not placed in a system you have not put that in a system you have not you know mode you no know, you have not set up a program for raising of that child so that it will become exactly 
with the person is supposed to become. You have not set up a program. You have not put a program together to make sure that that child becomes the person and the personality that God wants him to be. You have not put a program in place. You have not set a program in place. You don't have a schedule. You don't have a system. You don't have a routine that we are using to guide that child into that person that he's supposed to become. You are not having a program that you are using to shape the inside and the personality of that child. You must have a program. You must have a program in place that is intentional, that is purposeful. So, and I'm going to this week, I hope that this week, before the end of this week, I'm going to give you some program that you could use to raise up your, your, you know, your children, some content. But content is no problem. You can find content anywhere. The most important thing is that you must know that there must be a structure. And when I talk about structure, that means that you must come, you know, you must have a structure. Like, let's say, every day, you must have a plan and a structure of what you are doing with your... Let's, let me give you a structure. And I've talked about this all along this way. Let's say, between the age of three to five, you must have 30 minutes every day when you are talking to those children about values, when you are forming and you are, create, are putting in them the right value systems that are needed for them to become who they need to become. When you are choosing a topic, the topic that are in line with what you want them to become, the topics that are going to form in them the core of their personality, the core of who they will become in life. So you have those topics, and for a whole week, you take your children through those trainings, through that period of form of value formation. It is that period of value formation when, let's say, before, when they are three to five, you won't spend three or 30 minutes with them, sit down, and you are just putting that value system in them. Different topics every week. Or different, you know, it depends on maybe, and let's say different topic every week. Then when they are from age of five, I mean from five, let's say from six to 12, you should spend with them about one hour maybe, or maybe more than one hour every day. You are just hammering, hammering, hammering into their system from head to toe, everywhere. You put in a systematic way instructions that are buried, that are that are that are injected into their system. So by the time they become their, their teenagers, by 14, they are already defined. They already know what they need to do in life, what is wrong, what is right, and they already know exactly where they are going. So some of these topics have to border on who God is. What, what is the purpose of life? Why are they here? What is their calling? How to discover their purposes? Uh, how to become who they want to become? How to overcome uh, peer pressure? How to overcome the world? How to not, not to fall under the uh, pressure of, this, of, of the world and the sin, and sin? All kind of topics that are relevant to, to making them survive in the world and rule over the world. And, but most importantly, that will help them to formulate and to form the core of their personality, the core of who they are. That is what is, a, what is systematic parenting and nurturing. Now, what is the problem with not raising up a personality? If you don't have a system and if you don't have a structured, systema systematized uh, way of parenting, if you don't have an informed, if you, are, if you are not an informed parent, if you don't raise up a child in a systematic way, building structure of values in them. If you don't raise up your child in a system that will construct and build up um, and build up, you know, the core of who that person is on values. If you don't form and construct the personality of that child from when they are small, what happens to a child that is just a biomass? What happens to a baby that just grows up with in, in, in being taken care of only from the outward. And when, when a child is being fed, eating, drinking, entertained, having fun, uh, going to school, coming back from school, and there is no system that is putting in 
value system in that child. If there is no system of value system, nothing is constructed, just the body. But why is the baby, why is the child growing and growing healthy and happy and laughing and everything? Because you are feeding this, you are not, we are feeding the body. So the body is growing. The body is big, becoming bigger, everything. But you are not building anything inside. So what you have is a body of mass, a biological mass, biological body that doesn't have any, 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 uh, any, 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 that doesn't have any system to hold that body together. It doesn't have any anchor inside. It's a body of, of flesh that is doing everything right. The reactions are right and everything, emotions and instincts. So what is the problem with that? What is the problem when we just raise up the body of a child without building up this value system in him? One, number one ch problem is that you, that child is empty in his core. He just knows what everybody knows. He is not anchored. And you know, what is an anchor? You know, like, you know the sheep in the river, the, the, the sheep uh, on, the, on this ocean and all that. So the sheep needs an anchor, not to be thrown away by the, by the, by the tide and the, blow, the, the, the blowing wind. So that child looks everything okay, but if there is no anchor, Value system is the anchor that is holding that child together. Value system is the spine. It is spine. It's the spiral cord. So the anchor is the spiral cord of values and character that is holding that child together like this. And that is what is forming his direction. That is the thing that is helping him to determine is 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 uh is, is, that is like the um, what do you call it? Uh, what is it that when you turn it everywhere? Uh, it shows the place uh, when no matter where compass it's a compass so this is a compass you know value system is the compass that holds him together that compass is the one that makes him to be right to know what to do at the right time compass is the structured value system that is holding him and giving him direction to know exactly what to do so if you don't have <laughs> if you don't have that system and built into that child, the system of no value system, he doesn't become a personality. He's just a body. You call him name Alexander, uh, or Andrew, uh, Anna, or Esther. Hey, Esther has come. But Esther behaves anyhow. Esther behaves just like any other child behaves. Esther doesn't have a structured system of values. So he just reacts like every other human being reacts. Or he reacts this way today, tomorrow like that, this day after tomorrow like this. He just, he just like a wind, blown up by a wind anyhow. So when a child he does not, is not raised up to be a personality with value system, when there is no structured value system, no program of, of upbringing for a child, that child is a child normally in the body, but is zero inside. It's empty inside. So there is emptiness in that child. Emptiness in terms of it doesn't have a compass. It doesn't have uh, a lighthouse. It doesn't have a lighthouse that is giving him guidance. It doesn't have a lighthouse. It doesn't have a compass. It doesn't have a direction. It doesn't have um, an anchor. It doesn't have anything navigating him. It doesn't have a bearing. It doesn't have a bearing in life. So, he's, he's empty inside. It's okay. The breast will be big as a woman. The legs will be long and everything is okay. The hair will be okay. And that's everything that we're all paying attention to. For them to just be okay. You know, the hair style, the suit is okay. The body is all right. But we, we have lost and misplaced the most important thing. So, that kind of person is empty inside. That person, that kind of child that is not raised up to, on, on, the, on, the, on the basis of some concrete value system is egocentric. So a child that is not raised up to be, um, to be, to be guided and to be, um, to be uh, guided by a system of val a, a value system that is there, when there is no core, no spinal cord built up in him in this in the spirit realm the spinal spine the the spiritual spine is not built up that child is guided and is left to live by egocentrism that child is 
is is left to live by ego, by self, by by to be directed by self, and is living only for himself because he's not having a he's not having a uh, a, a, a lighthouse. He's not having a navigation. There is no navigation system in his, in his life. He doesn't have a navigation system. And what navigation system does is to is to determine the direction he's supposed to go in life. Is to give him a goal and a purpose. He doesn't have that goal. He doesn't have purpose. He doesn't have the direction that he's supposed to be living in. He doesn't have a campus that is always correcting him. And be, doesn't no, doesn't what what does it what does how does a campus look like? A campus could go off of this way or this way anyway but it will always find its way back to the right path it's always knowing it's always pointing to the north it's always pursuing the goal it's always going to the right direction why because it has that innerly built mechanism so if you don't have built your, that mechanism in your children it's called value system if you don't put that value system then they don't have that inner mechanism they don't have inner compass that is always you no know, returning them to the right path they, they might stumble they might fall but they will know exactly what they need to do to come out of the situation. So, in the absence of this value system, what a child is left with is himself. He's only left with himself. A child that is raised up to be an, a, a, a biomass, how do you know a biomass? A biomass is only, mm, is only concerned and is primarily concerned by himself, by his... Mm, a, a biomass is only concerned by its own reality, that is its own self. So its, its main concern, its preoccupation in life itself, is just about him. It's not thinking about his goals. It's not thinking about his purpose. It's not thinking about God's intention and purpose for his life. It's not. It doesn't have that anchor. He doesn't have that compass built in him. He doesn't have that mechanism. Everything, even his, his, every other thing around him is using them for his own good. So his parents and his mother and father and everybody, they're just supposed to be, you know, their furniture that are just servicing him or car or just tools that are being used for his own self. A person that is not, the value system is not built in them, they only see everything as a stepping stone. The father is a stepping stone, the mother is a stepping stone, the family is a stepping stone, school, teachers, brother, everybody is a stepping stone. It's all about them. They don't have, they don't live for anything greater than them. They don't live for, live for any that thing apart from themselves so that is another problem now that kind of child that is not raised up with a value system is living always in a conflict is always living in a internal controversy between himself he doesn't know what to do if either he's doing right or he's not doing right he's just he's confused that kind of person is always confused the next thing you will see in that kind of personality that doesn't have a value system. It doesn't matter how well it looks outside. It doesn't smoke, it doesn't drink, it doesn't... But in the real sense, it's always living by emotions. His emotions is the reality of his life. How he's feeling, oh, who offended me? Who didn't look at me the way he's supposed to look at me? Who didn't smile when they look at me? Uh, who didn't shake me? Who didn't greet me? Uh, you know, who, you know, how I feel today? There is weather today, there is no weather today. Uh, you know, I don't have mood today, I have mood tomorrow. Uh, they are, they, those are the empty things they are living for and living by. They are not living by, the, they are not saying, but let's say, let's take uh, the person that has a value system, for example, or a system of that is built to be a person. He doesn't, he doesn't, even if it's a child, he knows that it doesn't matter what I feel or how I look, how, how the weather is or no weather is. I have a goal. I am pursuing a goal. I'm pursuing an objective. I, you know, I am ruling over my emotions. I'm ruling over my feelings. I'm ruling over the weather. I'm ruling, I am living for something higher. I am not just concerned by myself. Myself is, let me say this, a person that has that understanding that I'm talking to you right now about that is built in a that has to be a personality he knows that his life is given to him only as a means as a means the body the mind everything the person you call him Sunday is giving this person personality is given to me as a means of accomplishing the purpose for which I was created so for example Sunday you know um, life life in general everybody's life is given to us for a purpose 
So my person, my personality is given to me as a means of fulfilling purpose. Because life is about purpose. Life is about establishing the will of, and the purpose of God on the earth. God sends everybody here for a purpose. So my life is not about me. My life is not for me anymore. My life and my, my mentality, my, my personality, my body, my mind, my, my, everything is supposed to be equipped to fulfill that purpose. So life is about purpose. Life is intentional god gave gives life intentional god, by, for purpose for intentions for for a goal so god sent you here for a mission so your life is an instrument in the hand of god to fulfill that mission so that mission that goal is more important than your personality your personality is he said god said i created god created all of us by himself and for himself we were all created by him and for him for him so i was created for his purpose it is his purpose that is the reason why i'm here so i'm not here for myself i'm not here for my body i'm not here for my life i'm not here for my for my intentions or for my agenda or for my goals or for my for my aspirations or for my intentions or for my likes or don't likes and he, I'm here as a means in the hand of God as an instrument in the hand of God as a tool in the hand of God I am here to, to package together made created like this for the purpose that God created me to be for his own purpose only I am an instrument of his of his purpose I am here as a means to fulfill his goals and his purpose. So a life of personality is that thing is taught to them from when they are small. When they are ch ch children, they know that it's not my, so my, my emotion doesn't matter anymore. My feelings doesn't matter anymore. My mood doesn't matter anymore. My, my, my what feelings or weather doesn't matter anymore. I am here, packaged, sent here for the purpose of God. That purpose of God is primary. That purpose of God, that intention of God, that goal of God is I am the instrument for that so I need to subject myself to, to towards that goal if necessary I need to subdue myself I need to break myself to fulfill that goal if necessary I need to make myself uncomfortable to fulfill that purpose if necessary I need to you know, allow pain or suffering or anything I need to go through anything necessary to make sure that I complete that purpose if, if necessary I am just an instrument meant of his will on the earth i am here to pursue his will not to pursue my comfort not to pursue my intention not to pursue my likings not to pursue what i want but to pursue the goals of his purpose so um but but for someone that is not having that anchor for someone that is not having that uh that lighthouse that that uh camp uh, that um compass in his life for someone that is not having that compass it is it is a life of tragedy he's full of himself he's always thinking about himself because you don't have goal there is no you are not defined no 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 purpose is defined for you no goal is defined for you so you are just thinking about yourself so you yourself become the compass <laughs> So it is not the will of God that is the compass of your life. It is not the will of God that is the that is the lighthouse that is pointing you into the direction. So there is no navigation system. So the navigation system is just you. So you are using your flesh and your emotion to be the navigation. So it's how your emotion feels that you go. What direction your emotions and your feelings and your mood goes is what you do. It feels this way this morning, you run this way. It feels that way that, that afternoon. In the morning, you follow the person again. You are just all over, up and down, everything. Because you are not, you don't have it. You are not gathered. You are not anchor, an anchor. You are not having a superior thing like um, a lighthouse that you are seeing, that you are following. You are not having a navigation system in you. Something has not been built in you. Only a bunch of masses, you know. That's what's called bow masses, bow Biological reality, biological mass. So egoism rules over such people. You know, conflict and controversy inside of them all the time. They're always living in controversy. I want, I don't want, I want, I don't want, oh baby this, baby that. Next thing, they are always angry. Oh, you didn't do this because it's emotion. Emotion is always making them to be angry and to be, you know, sad or to be happy or to be having mood, not having mood. So they are always, you know, 
who from happiness to to from high to low all the time they are always affected by what somebody else does what what happens somewhere what somebody said what they didn't say uh, they are always living in emotions they either they are angry or they are not happy or they are concerned about one thing or the other there is no value system that is guiding their actions or their behavior on the earth so they have not been taught since they were children, a child where to go. Why are we here? Where are we going? And 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 uh, where am I from? Where am I from? Where am I here? Where am I going? And uh, uh, yeah. So it's all about the value system. It's all about the value system. So people who have children, who are bringing up children, that's the way they bring up preach and they, they, the children, the way I said now. They just make sure that they eat, they have something to eat, they have something to wear, and they send them to school. Uh, maybe at most, oh, don't smoke, or don't drink. Oh, did I tell you? you come and greet daddy, come and greet uncle. Good morning, say good morning. Okay. Uh, don't steal, oh, don't steal. Okay, don't take that in. Who did I tell? Why did you take it? I told you not to take it. Just emotional, I'm mad bust, and occasional, just... That's not that's not upbringing. That's not parenting. That's just, it's just you know, just accidental. When you have that kind of accidental, accidental and chaotic upbringing, you have a chaotic life for the children. The children end up having a chaotic life. So, so no system of no structure, no system, no value system, no call, no no anchor, no guideline, no no navigatory system, no value system. Not just 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 by chance, we hope that this one out of these three children, one of them will be okay. Oh, we just hope that all of them will be okay. God help us, oh God help us. God should just come and do miracle. We do we that do what you want to reap where you have not sown. So the whole country just messed up. And I, and I discovered that even the good people, my own disciples, they don't even know the difference between, you know, values. What, why values are important in life? Why value system? Why, you know, even though great people are Christians, but you are Christians and you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't sleep around, you don't uh, shit and you don't uh, steal, because that is what you have been told that is bad. It's not because you, you something is built into you, and it's not because you have a world view that is that that is convinced that that's the way things are to be. If you have a world view like that, you will never ever say it is right, and that there is any excuse why anybody did that. You will never ever say that the people who are stealing and are robbing other people that they have an excuse. It's just like saying that you are going to kill people and you say you have an excuse. You know, you never have an excuse to do evil, to do what is wrong. If you are somebody that have value system, you will never ever condone any, you yourself don't do it and you say, oh, it's just them, oh, they are just young, oh, they're just, no, it's because you don't have that world view. So your world view to them is allowed because they don't know or because they were offended or because they are stealing from them or because something happened. It means it's not your worldview yet. Even though you are not doing it, you don't have that worldview because you can assume that somebody else can act like that or it's allowed or somebody else has, has an excuse. You, you know, you don't have that call. You don't have that, that system in your, of your worldview that determines your worldview. So I think that that's why I'm talking with this with so much intensity because I just wish that people could know this. And what I've discovered is that even the best of our people, they don't even know what I'm talking about. They just have the religious concept of, oh, don't steal, don't smoke, don't do sex, don't do this, because it's of religion. It's not because of worldview. It's, you know, they just, you know, because they go to church, because they say it's bad, because the environment, you know, they don't, they don't have their own personal worldview. They are not established in the system of worldview, which is a crisis, which is a situation. It means that when things are bad, everything is permitted or permissive. Even though they might not be doing it because of their religion or because of their belief. Okay, let me tell you an example, for example. A man of God in Nigeria, a man of God in Nigeria, uh, can I mention the name? Okay, no, don't let me mention it. One of the top three, maybe one of the top five men of God in Nigeria, maybe one of the first, top two, three or so, came to England, and when the person got to the airport, they stopped him, a big man of God, they stopped him and started shaking him out. Started, you know, shaking him. Do you have anything? They look at his passport. Is this you? Is this you? Yeah, and he was younger that time. So I said, are you the one? 
So he told them, oh, I cannot lie. I'm a pastor. I cannot lie. I'm a pastor. So this English woman who was sitting down there and shaking on the passport said, what, what did you say? He said, I'm a pastor. I cannot lie. And the woman, the British woman said, you said, you mean you cannot lie because just because you are a pastor? So if you had not been a pastor, it would have been okay for you to lie? So if you had not been a pastor, it's okay. If you could have found your way to lie, right? So you want me to believe you just because you are a pastor? Because you are a pastor, you cannot lie. So other people who are just human beings, they could lie. Or they are permitted to lie, is that what you're trying to say? This man of God said, I was so shocked that this an unbeliever British woman that is sitting there, it is already a world view, you see. It's not because of religion or no religion. So it's not because of religion. It's because of the world view. This is a question of world view. So the woman, even though she's an unbelieving English woman, but she will do what is right. Either she's a believer or she's not an unbeliever. It's a world view question. She will not lie, come what may, not because she's a pastor or she's a believer or she's going to church. No, it's just because of a value system. A value system has been built in them from childhood to know that there is no reason to lie. There is no excuse to lie. Either the economy is bad though, or the economy is good, though, there is no excuse for them to lie. If there is no justification in it. It's a world view. So this is my friend, when I was talking to him today, he was telling me, oh, pastor, you didn't get me. I'm not saying that I will do it. I will not do it, pastor. I'm not going to put money in MMM. I'm not going to do Ponzi scheme. I know that it's wrong. I will not do it, pastor. It's not something that I will do. I'm just telling you that they, that they do that, that is, you know, they can do it because of the situation in the country. That they are, uh, you know, they are, you know, they don't know better. So they can do it. It's because of the economy. The recession in the country. I'm not talking about myself, Pastor. It's not me I'm talking about. I'm just talking about them. That that is what they are thinking. <laughs> so I told him. I told him this, is my friend. That wait, 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 wait. If you are even permitting it in your mind to tell to say that they can do it and that it is understandable why they are doing it and that they are doing it because of this, 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 this. So it's permitted in your mind. It's permissive in your mind. You are permitting it. You, if you will not do it because you are a Christian, because you are a pastor, because you are this, because you are this, because you, you have been told in your church not to do it, because it is bad in your church. But you, you don't have a mindset. You don't have a value system. You don't have a world view. You don't have the right world view. You don't just do it because, you know, it's you. But other people could do it because it's them. You don't have this concrete world view that does not allow anything to... And you don't even allow things that are even permitted. So you can... Because of the way you are thinking that, okay, they can do it because of... That's why the whole society is like that. You are just concerned about your own domestic, you know, <laughs> righteousness. That I'm okay, I'm not doing... But the society will be ruined because you are permitted. You have given it a, pos you know, a possibility that they can do it. They can act like that. Even our churches don't teach like this. Even our churches don't have a system of worldview. Even our churches, we just have religious you know, rules and religious, you know, religious commandments and rules and laws. But we don't have worldviews. We don't build value systems. So people could go to church, they will pray, 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 and do this, but they will not follow value systems. When they go out of church, they will go out of church and do what they think is, is, is profitable right now. So what happens in, a, in, such, a, in a, such a situation when a child or someone is brought up like that you know like i just said now i am adult so everything will happen what will happen is that a child like that in the house will be okay to the, to the parents 
You will be doing something, but when he goes to the city or to the school or to the university or where there are no other people, he will, he will just join the crowd. He might not do the same thing in the beginning, or he will be mentioning what he's doing with what other people say, oh, I'm not as sinful as other people. Oh, I'm not as bad as other people. Oh, other people are even worse than me. So he will, he, he will know that you told him not to do this, not to do that, but when situations come, he will do different things. Because he doesn't have a core. He doesn't have an anchor in him. He might know it in his head that you said that you said that, but he doesn't have this sense. He doesn't have the strength. The system is not built in him. The structure is not in him. So when he goes to school, he will begin to behave with others just anyhow. You know, some, he will do some things, he will not do some things. He might even not be doing certain things, but in his mind, it's not clear cut. He will be think he will not be doing the same, but he will be thinking he's suffering. He will be thinking he's been um, he's been uh, some things have been taken from him. He's, he's missing out on some things when he's not doing what other people are doing. So that is how a society becomes a zoo park and an animal farm, because that is what happens when those kind of children grow up. Even though they might not be stealing or doing all the same thing, but in their mind. They are looking for the best opportunity to come for them to do it. Or they are doing other things too. They don't have a rigid, a formed you know, value system. They outlook into the world that makes them to just live by a given you know, principle and value system. So they will permit, they will tolerate other people. So the society will be disorganized. The, the foundation of the society will be, will be destroyed. And the Bible says that if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? That is why in Nigeria they say they have a lot of righteous, but there is no foundation. They are righteous in church, but they don't have foundation of behavior. Because there is no system of, no value system in them. There is no core in them. And this core, this value system is supposed to start from, child, from every family. From, from families, from upbringing. That's why there must be a value time, a value added time, you know, every day in the, in the, in the family. 